Are you familiar with the phrase, the devil made me do it? We all have our own version of that phrase. Some of us say things like, hey, he treated me like a child and that made me mad. Right? We say things like this, where essentially we are justifying our own behavior by blaming other people. But it begs the question, can you make me mad? No. So who makes me mad? I make myself mad. But this isn't how we typically think of emotions, that we're in control of them. They feel to us like they just show up and make life difficult for us, almost as a reaction out of our control. So what does it mean for us that we make ourselves mad? It means that emotions come from us. So what does that look like? You know, you've all probably had a moment at some point where you might have found yourself in, let's say, a meeting where the presenter said something that you found funny, so you find yourself giggling, and you look to the person next to you and she's kind of ticked, and you think, seriously, that was hilarious. I don't know what your deal is, right? Like you and I were in the same room, we're hearing the exact same thing, but man, it's like we're in a whole different world. We're having a completely different emotional response. So that is a a powerful reminder that we experience this all day long, right? There's something going on inside of each of us that's generating an emotional response. What do we know about that? What we know is that all day long, as we observe the world around us, our brains are working furiously to make sense of what things mean. And we tell ourselves a story about what's happening. And once we believe that story to be true, Emotions start to come, and they inform our every action. So being aware of this gives us an amazing opportunity to slow things down and to influence that emotional response, which indeed requires that we influence the stories we tell ourselves. Because what I believe is going on will affect how I feel about what is going on. And the more we understand about that process. The more attentive we are to that process, the more influence we can have over our emotional state, which as it relates to the crucial conversations we have, is a really big deal. Because how many of us have had something go awry in a conversation because we were just a little steamed up, we were a little bit upset? So what if we could calm ourselves down before we go into the conversation and really create problems? You know, years ago, I worked for an organization where I was a member of a two-person training team. So it was my boss and me, and I'll just call my boss Janet, okay? And Janet reported to the general manager of our entire center, and I'll call him Bill. Now, Janet and I worked very closely together. We were providing all the training for the entire company, and we worked very long hours, and we got to know each other really well. In fact, so well, one day, Janet came into the office and laughed with me, and she said, you know what I was just realizing? She said. Uh, I live alone, and I see you more than I see anyone else. So if I'm ever not in the office on a day when you're expecting me, it probably means something's happened to me. Would you call the police? That would really be helpful to me. So we had a little laugh, and I realized that she trusted me. Well, one particular Friday night, we were working late, as usual. It was 8 p.m., and she came to me with a request. And here's what she said to me. She said, you know, lately, I've been noticing that Bill... Now, you remember, that's the big boss. That's who she reports to. She goes, I've been noticing that Bill's been coming directly to talk to you without coming to talk to me first. That was true. Um, she said, I, I would really prefer, next time he comes to talk to you, if, if, you would, if you would not talk to him, if you would, in fact, redirect that conversation to me. And I just felt like I got hit with a sack of bricks. I mean... I was playing that out in my mind, and I can't even imagine, how is that supposed to go again? You know, the big boss comes and asks me to do something, and what am I supposed to say? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know that I'm the right person, maybe you should go talk to my boss. I felt like a child. I felt really dismissed and demeaned, and I I couldn't even imagine how that was possibly going to play out well for my future. Here's what happened. For many days after that, any time he would come, like within a quarter mile near me, I would immediately start looking as busy as possible and head in the other direction because I couldn't stomach the thought of having that conversation. I knew that this was not an easy request for me. I knew I didn't feel comfortable, but I didn't say anything. 
So when my boss asks me to do this impossible task, you know what I said? I said, anything you like, happy to help. But I wasn't happy. And because I hadn't found a way to talk it out, I started acting it out. And so around the office the next few weeks, I found myself feeling pretty disgruntled. And people would come up to me, friends, colleagues, and check in on me, how are you doing? And I wasn't doing well. And I would confide in my friends because I was frustrated and I was processing and decompressing. Now, I've told myself a story, haven't I? What's the story I've told myself here? I'm thinking, okay, let's play this out. Does Janet have a good relationship with her boss? Or is it troubled somehow? And, and the conclusion I come to is, I think they're having some problems. And I knew I had a good relationship with Bill. So then I started thinking, is it possible that she feels uncomfortable, maybe threatened by my relationship with her boss? Is she trying to edge me out? When I began to entertain this notion, it, it became very clear to me, this isn't going to work. I don't, I don't imagine having a future in an environment where I can't even help the people who are coming to ask me for work. I was a trainer in this company. My job was to promote a positive culture. I prided myself on doing good work. And yet, in that period of time after this conversation, you know what I'm doing, if I'm really honest with myself? I'm trash-talking my boss. I didn't even know I was doing it. But I have to tell you, my boss didn't last long at the company. Janet left shortly thereafter. And I've had a little bit of time to think about how all that played out, and I don't feel good about it. You know, in hindsight, I know that all these many years later, she kept up with me. She's been absolutely lovely to me, so supportive, so kind, so wonderful. And I believe now that my conclusion about what was going on that day could not have been more flawed. In hindsight, I do not believe for a second that she was trying to throw me under the bus. I think she was struggling. I think she saw me as a friend. I think she was asking me to help. I think she felt she could not be a good manager to our department, and she was asking me to loop her in on the back end any which way I could so that she could do her job and support me in my work. And I know now, had she said that in a way where I could have told myself a different story, if I could have just paused for a moment and noticed I'd been telling myself an ugly story and questioned it for half a second, I could have entertained the possibility that she was coming to me for help, and I would have helped. The surest way to get to my heart is to tell me, you need, you need me. You need me, I'll do anything for you. And I know I could have said in that moment when, when Bill approached, hey, you know what? Maybe I could go get my boss. We're such a small team. I don't want to leave her out of the loop. Maybe we could just avoid any questions later if we all have a chit-chat now. Would that be okay? And I bet that wouldn't have to derail my whole career. But I didn't do that. And now I sometimes wonder, is it possible that I might have contributed to her reputation when I had those conversations in the hallway? I'm not taking full responsibility for the trajectory of her career, but I know that I was not my best self in that moment. And I think how often do you and I go through our day, and we are on autopilot, and those stories kick in, and those emotions run strong, and we play those moments out, and what's the cost? Do people's careers get damaged? Do we lose out on opportunities to do great work? Do our re relationships potentially suffer? The wonderful thing about mastering our stories is that this is a tool available to any of us in any moment, in any time, and it is a reset button. It has been said that we can insert a space between stimulus and response. So next time you're ready to hit reply all on that email and copy a bunch of important people because you're really mad about what's going on, what if you could take a second and rethink, what's going on here? Is this emotion warranted? Where is it coming from? Is there another way I could think about this? Because when we begin to question our stories, we can release ourselves from the toxic emotions that come along with those. We can see the world through fresh perspectives. We can open ourselves up to the possibility that a conversation could actually yield new information for us. And that is the idea. When we can go into a conversation open and calm and curious, dare I say, even compassionate, 
we have a much better shot of being our best selves. And how I wish I'd had this tool all those many years ago. Today, we all do. And every moment can be that fresh start when we begin to master our stories. Thank you.